What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to get an easy film look for your videos. Now, if this is your first time to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button right now so you can see more videos like this. Film look is something that not everybody is skillful at doing. So today I'm dedicating this video to show how simple it could be and the necessary steps that you could take to make it very easy for you to get a film look on your videos as well. Okay, so first and foremost, you always have to start with you know, your hero shot. With this shot, I have a pretty good reference for all the other shots that is in my timeline because they're all in the same scene, the same setting, the same location, and the camera and lens did not change. And the main important thing that I did was in camera, I made sure that all my exposure was exposed fairly correct around the same ballpark of each other. So that will make it very easy for you to grade in post so you don't have to always calculate on different exposure for different shots. So the first thing I do is label my first node exposure. My first node is always my exposure. Um, you know, that's just how I always keep it. So we're just gonna name it exposure if I know how to spell that. And right here off the bat, I already know that, you know, this is where I'm going to bring some contrast into this log image. Now this log image is from the Zcam E2 specifically, and I have a pretty wide dynamic range on how far I can push this image. So with my exposure, I'm just gonna go down to my color wheels, okay? And then now I'm going to stretch my footage apart. So I'm gonna bring the shadows, I'm gonna bring the darks very low, all right? I'm not going to have it touch, but I'm just going to bring it up there. I mean, for my highlights, I feel like they're pretty good. You know, I'm, I don't need to touch it. Maybe I need to bring the shadows a little bit deeper. As far as like the highlights, you know, I feel like it's pretty good. I'm going to leave some room there so that way I can hit my contrast slider to finish the rest. Now I'm going to bump my contrast up. You see what I'm saying? And I usually like to juice my contrast. That's just me. I feel pretty happy with this because it was pretty well exposed to begin with. And now we're going to add another serial node and we're gonna call this one white balance, all right? WB. And in this node, immediately what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hit some saturation on it. I usually like to stick around the 60 area just so I could get some color in, you know? I feel like that's pretty good. Now I'm going to play with my temp and kind of bring it to a point where I feel like the image is pretty balanced. So my thing is to go really far and then bring it back to zero. And then now I can see where I'm really playing at. Uh, I think I like that. All right, now is where I create my LUT. Now my LUT is actually a plugin that I use called Dehancer, okay? So I'm gonna open my OFX plugin right here and it's already highlighted. I'm gonna click and drag it right onto that node. So now the thing with Dehancer is it's a plugin to where it helps you convert your footage into filmic looking footage. In the plugins effect, you would see that the source that you have here, you have different um, source like Rec. 709, Rec. 2020, or if you want, you could choose the type of camera that you have, you know. Um, in this case, you know, I'm rocking with a Z cam, so my camera type is not here. So I'm just going to go to Rec. 709 because I've already translated my footage into Rec. 709. So now there's a couple different settings. In the first section, I'm gonna take it all off. My profile, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back to that. I'm gonna keep it enabled. And the expand, I'm gonna keep that enabled as well too because the expand is going to give me control of my dark point and my white point. So whenever I feel like I potentially clip the image, I could bring it right back up. My print, I'm definitely gonna keep that on because that's where I'm going to control my um, high-end contrast look. And my color head, I'm gonna disable that because the color head, um, it's basically like 
uh, the best way I could put it to you is it, it's like a white balancing tool, but it helps you change the way the image look. So like either you want to make it more yellow or more blue, you know, magenta or more green. So that gives you the option to do all of that. And so you could get a, you know, a different tone to your image. So, but I'm going to take that off in the film grain. I'm going to save that for later. And my halation, I'm not gonna get too deep into that, but I'm going to put that in another video. I take that off, you know, my blooms, I save that for later too. The vignette, I save that for later. And the film breath, which is a very interesting feature, that's not something that I really like, but I, so I always take it off. My gate weave, I always take it off as well. The gate weave just give you a little bit of wobble. I take that off as well. The most important part here is the film, right? The type of film that I like to go for is in the Kodak area. Okay, there's a whole bunch of different films that you could use, but mine favorite is in the Kodak. And I could go, I could go through some of these and you could immediately see, you know, a big change in the image of how it looks. So, you know, my favorite one that I go for is the Kodak Pro Image 100. I will go down to my print and then I'm going to, you know, stretch the tonal contrast up a little bit on the print of the film. So that's why I wanted to leave some space in my waveform for later on because I know I was going to be doing all of this. So I'll bump my contrast up a little bit. You know, you see how it's stretching the waveform right there. And I'm going to keep it. I'm, I'm actually going to bump it some more like right around here. Boom. And that's it for my LUT section. Now I'm going to close this. And as you can see, my image is looking pretty OK so far. Let's see with and without the LUT. Let's do a full frame on this. This is with the Dehancer plugin, and this is without. And if you guys are looking for the Dehancer plugin, the link is down below, and I have a coupon code for you for 10% off, so you can go ahead and cop that yourself. Now, my next node, right, immediately is the skin tone. Skin tones is something that I cherish. I love a really nice looking skin tone. Um, and I don't do too much either with my skin tones. I simply, you know, go to my qualifier, all right? And I'll hit my highlights and I'll start qualifying for the skin tone, you know? And once I, and I feel like this was a pretty good key to begin with. And once I feel like I got something good, you know, I always try to push it a little bit to see how far I could bring it. We're going to stay right here, all right? Because we don't want to go too much into the image. Um, I feel like this was a pretty clean key regardless. Um, and I like to denoise all of that, like really heavy and clean my blacks some. And that's where I'm at with my skin tone. Um, I'm just going to leave it here because I feel like, you know, outside here is something that we really can't control. But if I really want to, I can get, you know, a window and control the spill a little bit more. Right. Um, but, you know, that's not something that I want to do. So I'm just going to turn it off. But you can decide if you want to do that or not. Once I have that now, I'm going to go to my U versus U and I'm going to bump it up just a little bit to bring some reds in her skin tone. All right. And that's about it, you know? And then from there, what I like to do is I like to take some detail off um, because the Z cam is pretty sharp. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some mid-tone detail off her skin. I usually like to bring it to like around 20, negative 20 to like negative 35. Um, you know, so let's bring it full frame to see what our skin tone is looking like. I feel like I should bring the you versus you down a little bit more. All right, cool. Let's see what that looks like in full frame. Um, now let's do before and after. So this is before. You see how the skin is pretty yellowish and whatnot. But with the after, we bring some reddish into the skin tone um, because, you know, with the grade in her shirt, 
and the background and the outside we were going to create a really nice contrast we're not going to do that yellow and we're not going to do the teal and orange that everybody always do but we're going to make sure we do some really good contrast between um the environment so that's why i brought the skin up a little bit more reddish than i would normally because i know where i'm going with my grade at this point this is where i usually you know do something extra so for example like that bottle i would like to change that bottle to complement her shirt so i could keep the colors in line with each other now we're starting to get a little bit intricate so once i see that i know that's not you know the type of grade that i'm trying to do here because i would have to like isolate this and then you know it turns into a whole different project and now i would have to isolate the bottle for every single shot that the bottle is in and that's not what i really want to do so now we're going to get our grade image right so we're going to create a serial node and then we're gonna label it our grade or look i like to use the word grade this is my grade all right so with this immediately i know i want to create some color contrast right you got you got to basically use the color contrast that you know the sliders give you you know if you're gonna go to teal contrast it with the opposite side so with the shadows i'm just gonna go with the more with a more tealish approach all right more cooler teal approach and that's where i'm just gonna stay with my shadows and now i know the skin tones definitely went out of whack a little bit i'm gonna bring some warmth into that by bringing that more towards the reds right my mid-tones which is my gamma i'm gonna bring that towards the reds a little bit you see how it starts to bring it back a little bit um and i can still push my shadows down some too if i want all right so now we're going to create that contrast with the highlights now so with our gain we're just going to bring it directly to the yellow right we're gonna we're just gonna push that straight to the yellow boom you feel me juice that up a little bit let's do a before and after with the grade let's full frame that all right let's do let's do before and then after the grade now we're getting some attitude in there but we're not done all right we're not done with this i like to add that's where i like to really juice up juice up my saturation in the grade node um so in the saturation i would just crank that thing up all right boost that and i'm gonna leave some space all right i'm not gonna i'm not gonna destroy it here i'm gonna leave some space because on my color boost now i'm gonna boost that thing up some more you know like right here boom look how juicy this looks right so we're gonna wrap it up with a new with another node a serial node as you can see we didn't get we didn't get fancy here we just kept everything in line if you're not the type of person that has like you know extensive experience in color grading keep it simple stupid right why not this is where we're gonna wrap it up with that last node so let's call it the finish right and how I like to finish, I like to bring the dehancer back into this, okay? So like, I'm gonna go back into my OFX plugin. Let's move this over some. And I'm going to drag that right in there. Boom. So of course it changed it. So now this time around with the dehancer, I'm going to take some stuff out as well. So like, um, you know, with the film, we already have a film in there so i'm going to immediately take that off i don't need another film on there because i've already created my look right so i took the film off and my black point taking that off i don't need none of that and the only thing i need my print i'm gonna take that off as well and the only thing i need for my finish is the bloom and i need grain that's it the bloom will give me you know a more softer image by you know boosting up the highlights and kind of like soften up the highlights a little bit the same kind of effect you would have gotten if you were to use like a pro mist filter so my bloom is right here okay we're gonna add the bloom enable that so first let's hit the film grain all right i want we we have so many controls on how we could control the film grain for this specific look i'm going to raise how much um film grain i have in the shot 
And with the shadows, I'm gonna bring the shadows down. The midtones, I'm gonna keep the midtones where they're at right now. And my highlights, I'm just gonna juice my highlights up. All right, I'm just gonna juice it from the back. I like to see, I like to see some grain in my highlights. And boom. All right, and now we're gonna go down to our bloom. I like my highlights to be like very diffused. There's a diffusion section to where how soft you can make your highlights. And I normally like to crank that all the way up. That's just that's just me. And how much amplification I want to give it. As you can see, I could go really crazy here. I'm just going to keep it very modest, right? And voila. I feel like this is it, man. This is it. Um, let's see the before and after with this. And I honestly think it's a little bit too much bloom and too much grain for my taste. I think I, I think I bumped it up a little bit too much for you guys to see. So I'm going to leave it there because I want y'all to be able to see it through YouTube. But the bloom, I'm going to take the bloom intensity down a little bit more. So if we were to do before and after, you know, it's a whole different, it's a different ball game. I mean, although this is clean, I like a clean look. Um, but you know, I want to bring it a little grungy for this. What we're going to do now to put the icing on the cake, we're going to go to our timeline, output blinking, two to 35 crop bar ratio. Boom. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit me with that thumbs up, man. Um, I feel like, you know, a lot of people are afraid of color grading and are afraid to like really test it out because they don't want to have bad colors. Bad colors is subjective. Everybody's colorblind in some way, shape or form. You know, just train your eyes to be better at seeing the different types of colors that you like and what colors make you happy. Take feedback from other people and then dial back and then readjust. That's it, man. That's it at the end of the day. That's, that's what make good colorists great. You know, they know how to take great feedback and they know how to adjust to the common eye. So, and that's all you gotta do when it comes to approaching color grading. And if you guys are looking for that plugin, the answer, I have a coupon code down at the bottom, um, Shooter101, use that at checkout. It'll give you 10% off. Until next time, I'ma see you on my next one. Deuces.